Robinson. He even went down the sideline and he's got Cass Decker bringing you UCLA football content all throughout the year for LA Football Network. What is good, Bruin Bible listeners? It is your host, Will Decker. We got to get a sponsor in before we start this episode. It's Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines and the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA playoffs. Bet Online is your sports intel headquarters this season as we have you covered for your insider sports wagering needs from basketball, Major League Baseball, NHL, hockey, golf, to UFC and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Make sure you check out Bet Online. Get into the action today. So head to the website or use your mobile device. To join and be sure to use your promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Now to the Bruin Bible. What is up and welcome to a brand new edition of the Bruin Bible. Very special guest returning, Mr. Coach Chev himself, Darren Chiaverini, former offensive analyst at UCLA, now the head coach at Chafee College. And we got to start there, Coach. Tell me about the summer workouts. Tell me how Chafee is coming together. All of our UCLA fans need to get out to Chafee College and watch some of the games that are going on this fall. Coach, tell me about what's going on with your program. You know, it's been it's been a mad sprint, man, since I've got there. You know, I've been there about six weeks now and, you know, put together a staff, um, really recruited a roster that there was zero players when I got there at the end of May. And so we have a roster of about 95 kids now. And, uh, you know, they're – we're about five weeks into our summer workout class. So we've been, you know, speedy conditioning, weightlifting. We've had about 13 practices on the actual football field. And so, you know, they're coming together. They're starting to gel a little bit and uh, really starting to kind of adapt to the installations on offense and defense. And it's always fun when you get a chance to build something and kind of build it from scratch. So it's been a, it's been, it's been fun in that sense of, you know, getting an opportunity to kind of put a team together. Absolutely, man. And we've been kind of paying attention on Twitter to all the updates you guys got going on at Chafee. Is it true that you guys have the only strength and conditioning staff of any junior college in Southern California? So we, we're one of the only, I believe we're the only in California that has a full-time strength coach. Um, other programs have strength and conditioning coaches, but we're the only one that's a full-time employee that's employed by Chafee College. So you know, our, our strength coach, Coach Padilla, does a great job with those guys, uh, really pushes them and Definitely seen some development over the last five weeks. And uh, we got about a week and a half left to go in the summer class before we give them a little break. And then we start August, our August camp starts uh, August 7th for fall camp. And how can uh, players reach out to you if they want to join Chafee and be a part of what you guys yeah. got going on? The, the easiest way to get a hold of me is just follow me on Twitter and then send me a message. My Twitter handle is at Coach Chef6. So it's just coach and then CHEV6, and then my DMs are open. So they can send me a direct message, you know, and I'll get back to them. And, uh, you know, we're definitely looking for the best players in California to come join us and uh, excited about this first football season at Chafee College. Only the best of the best go into Chafee. And, Coach, you were the first person I thought of when it came to breaking down the wide receiver position at UCLA for a multitude of different reasons. One, you were a high-level receiver in your own right, fifth-round NFL draft pick. You know all the ins and outs of the receiving room as a whole. And let alone, you were there to watch some of these players kind of develop and sprout wings of their own last year at UCLA. I, I bet that was a position group that you paid very close attention to, knowing it was your position back in the day. So you're the perfect guy to break down the UCLA wide receivers for this podcast. The question I want to start off with you, Coach, who were some of the receivers – coaches or you know fellow players that made the biggest impact on you at the position when you were playing wide out you know I think for me you know my maturation process definitely playing the position of receiver really when I got to the National Football League um, you know Jerry Butler who played for the Buffalo Bills for the first round pick he was my first receiver coach in the NFL um, you know he was just really like 
he really analyzed the position from a release standpoint. You know, he saw the game a little bit differently. And so he really opened my mind to, you know, route running and seeing coverage. Um, you know, de definitely had some really good coaches along the way. You know, obviously, you know, Coach Durrell, who was the former head coach at UCLA, was my position coach in college. And, you know, I thought he was, you know, very, uh, very cerebral about the position as well. And so, you know, and also just being around other good players. I think that's one thing that you can learn a lot from as a player is watching other good players play. I remember when I went to the to the Senior Bowl uh, my senior year in college, we I was on the same roster as Torrey Holt. And watching Torrey Holt run routes, I mean, it was phenomenal. I mean, he was just – and he was a technician about his position. And I always felt like I was a technician about how I approached the game and how I approached route running and – and releases and stemming and, and leverages and all that. But really getting a chance to be there with Tori and watching him work, man, that was, that was impressive. I can see why, you know, he's going to, you know, he's going to be in the hall of fame. So, um, you know, just, I think you pick up a little bit of from each and every guy you're with as a coach. And then also as players that you play with, I think that's, that's really how I developed over the course of my college and then pro career. Awesome, man. And for any kids out there who do not know who Tori Holt is, Go and look up the greatest show on turf, the Rams, and what they were able to put together in the early 2000s. One of the legendary offensive teams, and you know, Torrey Holt was a massive part of that, probably going to Canton at some day. Coach, I want to hear from your experience, because I heard the quote come out from Jake Bobo last year where he goes, as a wide receiver, I've never experienced anything like coming to UCLA and learning the wide receiver position from Chip Kelly, from Jerry Neuheisel, probably a lot of tips from yourself. What makes that wide receiver room different and how Chip – approaches the position you know i think what coach kelly does a great job of is the way that and we call it training at ucla we don't call it practice we call it training sessions and so um i just love the way that coach kelly structured his training sessions from individuals to group work to your three on two four on three work to your seven on seven situational work and also open field stuff and then just concept wise, I mean, Coach Kelly is, you know, everybody knows how bright he is as far as his offensive mind going way back to the Oregon days. But, you know, just the way he approaches the game of football and the passing game and how he is able to get guys open by how he attacks defenses. I think that's uh, something that I, I think Coach Kelly doesn't get as much credit for as he should. But I do believe that the way that UCLA football trains is, is, is different than other programs. And that gives UCLA a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an advantage on game day because they're, they get so many reps and they train concepts at a very high level from third down to red zone work, to field work and open field work. So I really believe that the way coach Kelly structures his training sessions is, is, is pretty elite. And I've actually taken a lot of that, uh, over to Chafee with me and you know I've, I've worked with different offensive coaches and worked for different head coaches in the division one level and other levels but I think what coach Kelly does really open my eyes to how you train and practice and really gives guys an advantage yeah and you you know have been around the coaching circle you know we're at your alma mater Colorado Texas Tech you've been a variety of different places coach but let's get to the wide receivers themselves I'm interested to hear your takes on some of these guys the first guy I'm going to start with is entering his third year uh, with the program back from Texas A&M, Cam Brown. And you and I both know he has shown some elite flashes at times. He finished last year with four catches for 115 yards in the Sun Bowl, a guy that, you know, makes plays when his number's called. And I'm really excited to see how he, you know, gets implemented in the offense with maybe more of a pro-style look this year. We know without the Dorian Thompson-Robinson offense that we ran previously – what are some of the traits that you saw from Cam Brown that really stood out to you as a coach? You know, just being around Cam for the for last year, I really saw him grow a lot during the year. You know, he was hampered a little bit in training camp because he had like a finger issue. And so he was a little bit limited early in the early part of the season. But I really saw him develop over the course of the year and really gain confidence because Cam can really run. He can kind of stretch the defense, you know, vertically. And I, I saw him become a better route runner as the year progressed just in his – his, his approach to practice and his training sessions and how he basically was doing a better job of learning uh, intricacies of the offense. And so, you know, I, I do believe that, you know, Cam's kind of, you know, on that tipping point of having a really breakout season. I think the bowl game, you saw it make some big catches in the bowl game. And, um, you know, I do think, you know, Cam is going to take that next step this year, definitely in his development. 
Yeah, Cam is an exciting guy that we're all thrilled about. Uh, excited to hear that he has progressed as a route runner coming to UCLA, was talented enough to get some SEC offers initially coming out of high school. So Cam Brown, he could be having a big year for the Bruins. Next guy we got up for you, man. And it's a classic situation of when his number was called, he made big plays. Logan Loya, one catch in the Utah game. It was a 70-yard touchdown to pretty much seal the game. One catch against USC, 38 yards. Only three catches in the Sumble, had a touchdown out of it. Logan Loya looks like the heir apparent to Kyle Phillips to me, where he lines up in the slot. And I just, very similar size, very similar quickness, skill set, however you want to label that. I think Logan Loya could be that next guy. Talk to me about his skills and what you see from Loya, because I'm thrilled about this guy coming back for our receiving room. Yeah, I think Logan, I um, mean, you know, I was there for spring ball this year. So I spent, you know, the whole spring, you know, spring practice out there with UCLA football. And I really saw Logan kind of take that next step. We spent a lot of time last year just talking about football. You know, I played the slot position in college and also played outside in college. So, you know, I knew some of the things he was going through as a player. And so we had a lot of conversations just off the field about, you know, how he can improve, what he needs to do to kind of grow as a player. And, I really saw him attack that in the off season, just getting stronger in the weight room, getting stronger in his lower body. And, um, you know, he, he had a great spring. There's no question. He had a great spring and was really becoming uh, more, he was, he was more powerful, but he was, he was more explosive in spring than he was the, the, the following, I mean, the previous fall. And, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time just in the off season talking and, and, and looking at route concepts and looking at his route running ability and, you know, he really took it to heart and he really made some changes that, you know, we talked about and Coach Neuheisel talked about. And uh, shoot, man, I, I think he's going to have a really big breakout year. And he's shown some flashes, but I think he's going to be even better this year. Yeah, no, Loya, I'm pumped about. I saw the flashes in spring, uh, you know, it was open to the public this year. So we actually got to see it a little bit more, which was fun to watch. Coach, what is the most important trait a receiver has? Is it the route running? Is it the ability to get separation? Is it speed? Is it off the line? In your opinion, what would you put as the most important trait for a wideout? The most important trait for a wideout is the ability to separate at the top of your route stem. I mean, there's a lot of guys that I played football with back in the 90s and in the 2000s and, and in pro football that had elite speed but didn't really understand the art of separation at the top of the route stem. One that really comes to mind last year is, is Bobo. Bobo yeah. is, has the innate ability – to separate at the top of his routes and make clutch catches. And, you know, I was disappointed for him that he didn't get drafted, but I know he's been having a good uh, mini camp and, and I'm sure he's going to have a good, uh, you know, training camp with Seattle, but the, the, the best quality of a receiver is the ability to separate. And yeah, obviously you got to be able to run, you got to be able to catch, but that's the little fine details of route running is, is being able to change speeds in your route stem and also in and out of your break points, being able to get open at the right time for the quarterback. Yeah. And I mean, you saw it last year as much as we did in the stands, his ability to make the clutch catch on third and fourth down. I mean, it's the best I can remember as a fan of UCLA football and somebody that covers the team. The guy just had a knack for coming up with huge catches and timely matters. So Bobo, one of the best, didn't get drafted, but we're excited to see him in Seattle this upcoming year. Bruin Bible listeners, we've got a special sponsor uh, for today's episode. It is AG1. AG1 has been something that I've really enjoyed using in my spare time. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole-source food nutrients in one scoop that you can use into your water. You stir it up. I use it before my workouts, before I start my day, and it has totally given me the energy I need to do the little things in life, like going to work, getting extra, you know, an extra boost, a second wind, if you will, for a workout before I play pickleball with my friends. Just it puts you in a good spirit of mind and you know you're doing the healthiest possible thing by putting AG1 in your body. Make sure to check us out and get a special deal with the Bruin Bible it's www.drinkag1.com slash Bruin Bible to get the special deal that we provide. Once again, www.drinkag1.com slash Bruin Bible to get that special deal. Now back to the Bruin Bible. Next guy I got for you guy, another guy that flashed in the bowl game. It seemed like the receivers room just really made an impact in the Sun Bowl against Pitt. TMA, uh, Titus Mokiawa and Tim Alala. He had one of the nastiest catches you'll see on a football field, that 49-yarder with a defender draped all over him on a dime from DTR, and then had that beautiful crossing route. 
And to your point, he kind of broke in the middle of the field at the top of his route, got a ton of separation, and got to the end zone for a touchdown. Talk to me about Titus because coming into camp, I actually had him as my wide receiver number three, just from what I was able to evaluate. Fortunately, some injuries kind of, you know, hampered that a little bit. But I still think the sky is the limit for TMA if he's healthy this year. Yeah, the one thing that I noticed about Titus when I first got to know him last year when I was an analyst was he's a natural playmaker. I mean, he really is in practice. I just seen him make a lot of plays. You know, he was really raw last year when he first got to UCLA and his route running, his releases, understanding coverage, understanding conversions. But I've really seen him grow over the last fall and then early this spring while I was there. And I'm sure he's going to continue to, to develop. And, you know, Coach Newhouse does a good job with those guys. So, you know, Titus will take the next step. You know, I think he was a little hampered in spring with some injury. But he's um, – I'm sure he's back to full strength. And, you know, he is very much a natural playmaker. And, you know, I can see what people saw in him coming out of high school, out of Hawaii. And so um, I think that kid's going to continue to get better. Yeah, he was a four-star prospect coming out of high school in Hawaii had a multitude of offers from the SEC, he wanted to play with his buddy Dylan Gabriel at UCF and then eventually transferred to UCLA. Um, last guy I got for you – know, you know what? We're going to go to the outside wide receiver position. The two new guys, man. You were there for all of spring. Let's start with the household name that has kind of just been you know, going off the charts since he's gotten to UCLA, J. Michael Sturdivant. And I remember watching him walk out onto the practice field the first time. I'm going, what is this pro doing – with the rest of these college kids. He's a big bodied wide receiver. He looks like a, an athlete's athlete. You know what I mean? He's the most athletic guy in the field. And we saw the drills. He looked unbelievable in spring camp. Obviously he's got to do that in the game, but he did that at Cal. Talk to me about what you saw from Sturdivant, because I think this kid could be one of the best receivers in the PAC 12. If everything goes right. Yeah. You know, Jay Michael is extremely talented. I, you know, I remember watching him in high school watching him work out in high school and you know I was blown away with just his natural route running ability obviously he's a long lean athlete and he's got really good vertical speed and you know anybody that was at practice this spring saw that he's he's a little different you know he's got some top end speed he's got really good ball skills he understands football he understands how to separate um, but what makes him very dynamic is he he's got that top end elite speed and so you know, I would I would say Jay Michaels is, you know, he showed it last year at Cal. I mean, he's not a secret to anybody in the Pac-12. Everybody knows how good of a football player this kid is. But I do believe that he can continue to get better just by challenging himself mentally and physically every day he steps out there on the practice field and in those training sessions with Coach Kelly and Coach Neuheisel. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited about him. I, I watched him closely this spring, and we talked about a lot of things off the field about releases and other stuff like that. And so – you know, I really think people are going to be – I think Bruins fans will be excited about this kid because he's a different type of wideout. He really is. He's He'll be amongst the elite in, in that conference for sure. Yeah, an elite athlete. And like you mentioned, man, he has every part of his game, you know, refined up to this point. Can still improve in some areas. Nobody's perfect, but he's got a damn good head start when it comes to the wide receiver room. The other guy on the outside, very different big-bodied wide receiver, you know, kind of – you know, more of a possession guy is it, you know, to take the top off the defense with the speed. Kyle Ford, a guy that I think a lot of people have forgotten about, uh, given how loaded those USC rooms were that he was competing for their spot. Um, we remember him as UCLA fans because he had the huge touchdown catch against UCLA in, you know, the, uh, the battle of LA. Talk to me about Kyle Ford, man, because I really see a guy that has found a place where he can get in and make some plays. It's only a matter of time before he gets some touchdowns going for UCLA. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, one thing that I definitely saw this spring with Kyle was he got better each practice. You know, I think he, uh, you know, he was getting familiar with the offensive system and getting familiar with the concepts that UCLA football runs. But once he got comfortable with that, I mean, he's a big physical kid. I mean, if you look at Kyle Ford on the hoof and you see him, you know, in practice, he is a thick kid. You know, he's 215 pounds, 220 pounds. And, you know, he's a he's a mismatch, you know, he's a problem for defensive backs because he's built like a linebacker and he, he has better speed than people think, you know, he's, I would say he's, he's, he's more than just a possession receiver because I've seen him stretch the defense, you know, obviously last year in our game and also in, in spring practice this year. So, you know, I do believe that Kyle Ford's best footballs ahead of him, 
and I do think that UCLA was a great choice for him. You know, I remember him coming out of high school. I recruited him very hard when I was at the University of Colorado. Almost got him. You know, he ended up going to that team across town. But, um, you know, I, I do believe that Kyle uh, wants to be a really good player. He wants to learn. He'll work every day in practice. And um, he'll listen. So those are good. Those are good traits for a guy that that is talented. So I'm 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 anticipating you know Kyle doing some good things this year. Breakout player potentially for the Bruins and Kyle Ford. And the last guy I got to give to you, Coach Jeff, before we get out of here, uh, Braden Pagan is a guy we didn't see on the field last year, but I watched very closely in practice. You talk about athletic gifts. Six foot four, 195 pounds. He's routinely making one-handed catches, catches in traffic. Talk to me about the potential of this kid because I think, you know, if something goes his way and he can get on the field early, he's going to be an impact player for UCLA down the line. Yeah, Braden, you know, he's a great kid. He reminds me a lot of Danny Farmer when Danny Farmer was at UCLA. You know, long 6'3", 6'4", kid that can stretch the field vertically. He's got good ball skills. You know, I think for Braden, the, the biggest uh, – you know, obstacle for him is just continue to develop his, his, his mental toughness and develop his approach to practice. And when things don't go your way, that you got to come back fighting just as hard, you know? And so, you know, we had a lot of conversations, you know, me and Braden off the field, just because I played the position of receiver and I was built a lot like him, you know, I was over six, two. And, and so I understand the things that he's going through. And so, Physically, he's as gifted as anybody you're going to see in the Pac-12. I think mentally he's got to keep developing, keep pushing himself, keep challenging himself. And then when things don't go your way, how do you respond? You know, that, that's the biggest thing. I think for any kind of young player, you know, Braden, you know, you know, didn't really get to play last year. So it's going to be really kind of his first year in college football again. And so when things don't go your way, how do you respond? You know, how do you use your self-talk? How do you approach – you know, each every day you go out there, if things aren't going your way, and how do you fight back? And so I'm excited to see him because he has worked hard in the weight room. You know, he's physically gifted when you look at him, you know, walking around or running around on the field. And so I do believe that Braden's going to continue to develop with Coach Neuheisel and Coach Kelly and the offensive system that, that, that UCLA football runs. And, um, you know, he's – I think he's kind of the, sleep, the sleeper of the group for sure. I mean, I think because physically he's got some elite gifts. Absolutely. And the mental aspect of approaching the game, getting your mind right, doing the little things to get ready are just as big, if not bigger than just natural talent on the field. Once you get to the division one level coach, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I got one more question for you. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Top five wide receivers you played with or against in your tenure as a football player. Shoot, man. Top five I played with or against. So I'll tell you too, that I played against, I remember my second year in the NFL, we had a preseason game in Cleveland against the Minnesota Vikings. And oh. here walks out Randy Moss and Chris Carter. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Like, I'm playing on the same field as Chris Carter and Randy Moss. And then the next one, it was at the end of his career. But Jerry Rice, you know, when I, when I played for the Browns, we played in Oakland. And they had Jerry Rice and Andre Risen. And, you know, I scored in that game. And I think Jerry scored in that game. And I think uh, Bad Moon Rising scored in that game, too. And so uh, the other one would be Michael Irvin. I remember my first ever NFL game, uh, we played in the Hall of Fame game against the Cowboys. And I just remember the triplets walking out. So you see Troy Aikman walk out, Emmett Smith walks out, and then uh, Michael Irvin walk out. And I remember that game vividly because I was, I was the starting kick returner. And it was – it was about the game was about to go into overtime. I think the game was tied late in the game. And I remember Emmett and I ended up playing with Emmett a couple of years later on the Cowboys, but Emmett was yelling at me because he wanted to go home and the game was tied. So he wanted me to take the ball back to the, you know, take it back to the house because they were kicking off. So I hear Emmett's just yelling at me on the field and I'm going, man, Emmett Smith's yelling at me right now. How cool is this? <laughs> you know, I remember, I remember sitting at home in high school, watching them in the Super Bowl beat Buffalo in the Rose bowl. And so, I mean, how, how cool is that experience to be able to go through that, you know? So yeah, some great memories, definitely playing against some great players in the national football league. And that definitely was, you know, highlight of my career to be able to play with and against some really great players, you know? 
Coach, you reached the pinnacle of your profession. You know, that's all you can ask for. And Emmett's a good guy. We ran into him at Super Bowl week. Very humble, you know, very yeah. under the radar type of guy. Easy to get along with. Coach, has the Chafee schedule been released yet uh, for the Yes, public? I actually just – I posted it on Twitter today, Will, so you can check it out, you know. You can, you can, awesome. you can retweet it for me too, man. Of course. I'm going to be doing that right after. You know yeah. I'm going to be hitting up a game or two this year too. You got to let me know which one's the big ones. Coach Chev, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking time. Hey, the one thing, too, Will, I want to give a yeah. shout out. You know, uh, you didn't mention, you know, Grant Gray, but I grew up with, you know, Grant's mom. And yeah. Played against his dad in high school, you know, Scotty, and obviously, you know, his stepdad, really Lowell, who's the head baseball coach of Riverside City. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely uh, pulling for Grant to see him do some great things uh, in a Bruin uniform. And, um, you know, you still got a good one with that kid. He's going to be a good player. Oh, man, for two different sports, right? I mean, I think the, the uh, MLB draft got scared off a little bit because, you know, they said, hey, he could be going playing college football. I watched the highlights for baseball, and I, I'm just as big as a baseball fan as I am football. That kid can play. That kid can play. No, there's no question. I think it's, he'll be a great football and baseball player at UCLA, and that's he's at the right place for him for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be following in John John Vaughn's footsteps, doing the two sports athletes. Coach Jeff, great to see you as always, man. We got to link up soon. Uh, yep. Bruin Bible, uh, we are officially out.